Some buildings come to symbolize a nation, like this and this. And that. It's the Opera House that instantly put Australia on the map. Like other landmark buildings, it was enormously ambitious and it used trailblazing building techniques. This incredible building has its share of secrets hidden in its engineering DNA. It just wouldn't have been possible without a First World War gas mask. Glue for oh, false teeth. Ancient Egyptian or A copper bottom sailing ship. of every great opera house and concert hall obviously is this the stage the seats this is what it's all about and from in here well you really could be anywhere in the world but you certainly wouldn't say that about the structure around it Bring that board. Okay. Bring around the road. it's certainly I'll not just a boring the box around the stage in fact it's one of the most famous buildings in the world this building has such a famous shape that you could draw it on the back of an envelope and almost anyone would recognise it. Completed in 1973, the distinctive profile of Sydney Opera House instantly made it an icon of Australia. But construction had been troubled, political wrangling led to costly overruns and delayed completion by nine years. And the building wouldn't even stand up unless the designers had overcome formidable engineering challenges with some help from a collapsible toy. But more of that later, because when I said I wanted to get on top of the building to have a look around for myself, they didn't just point me to the lift. There's a lot of safety equipment coming out here. Oh, there's more. Is, is this a hint? I'm beginning to get that feeling when you don't quite know what you're in for. How about that? But you'll be quite safe. Quite. Yeah. So, with enough equipment for an Everest expedition, I set off. Maybe this is the way to the cheap seats. I do like a night out at the theatre. Going down is a bit of a puzzle. I should be climbing 55 metres. Yeah, this is the thing about opera. It's the glamour. Ow. Wow. That is staggering. Suddenly, despite crawling around inside it for a long time to get here, you suddenly feel you really are standing on a piece of sculpture. It just takes the breath away. Yeah. It just doesn't seem real. There are many, many theories about what inspired the shape of the Sydney Opera House roof. Sails, nuns' hats, an armadillo. Perhaps not. But whatever you see in these incredible forms, we do know that the architect wanted to create a magical space where you could leave everyday life behind. The site itself was extraordinary. Previously a tram terminus, Danish architect Jørn Utsen aimed to make the most of its position right on the waterfront in the heart of Sydney. This is how it all started, in 1956, with Utsen's rough sketch for a competition for a new opera house. A 
According to one version of the story, Jörn Utzen's winning design with these spectacular shapes wasn't even on the shortlist. It was picked out of the reject bin by one of the judges. But engineer Ove Arup, who's another hero of this story, feared he couldn't build Utzen's winning design. The problem was lots of big, curved shapes, and Utzen didn't want columns to hold them up either. Steel would have been the obvious solution. It was easy to work and strong enough to hold the complex shapes. Best of all, it would be affordable. But Utzen wasn't thinking about the price or making construction simple. His plan was for a vast, magical space, a huge so Move right along, move he right was along, get everybody in, that's it, that's it, that's it. It was up to the engineers to make it happen. Thank you very much indeed for inviting us along for part of this wonderful day. It's been a great experience for the children and we very, very much appreciate it. After three, a nice bow. One, two, three. Well done, Dennis. It's not to keep this evidence. It's not going to work. Because you know that somewhere there's a solution. We knew that the magic of the design would be compromised with traditional concrete construction. They could never achieve the delicate shapes Utsun wanted. Arab's answer was to make a frame for each sail out of huge hollow concrete ribs. But it had never been done before on the scale required at Sydney. The biggest ribs would be fully 55 meters high. They were too big and heavy to mold in one piece. The principle behind the solution was child's play. Enter our first connection, a puppet. This is the key. Well, not this particular giraffe, but the principle behind it, because toys like these are made of individual segments, in this case made of wood, held together with a cord. When you press the button on the bottom, it slackens the cord and the whole thing collapses. But let go again and it tightens up and the whole thing keeps its shape. And that is the principle they used when they built the Sydney Opera House. Arup decided to make the huge ribs out of segments which could be pulled together to make the right shape, just like that child's collapsible toy. The technique is called post-tensioning. It also strengthens the concrete and was devised by a French engineer in the early 20th century to make bigger spans in bridges. 